church leadership. <laughs> um, so I'd like to do something special here. Um, do we have anyone uh, that has been that was elected to a leadership position or is serving as a as a committee chair for the 2019? Any any newly elected individuals back in November of 2018? Newly or renewed? Yeah. Okay. You're, you don't have to come forward. Just stand up. So yeah. <laughs> okay. So everybody, look at the stage. There's three. There's. There. <laughs> Okay, and Brenda and Jim, okay, Brett and uh, and Kim, um, Kelly, um, Terry, Corey, yep, and Bruce, Tom, and oh, geez, Aunt Pamela. I know everybody's name. <laughs> um, two weeks have, have have caused my brain to do something. So, anyways, uh, just to do something for me, thank you all for standing up and being elected to uh, newly uh, these positions. And um, I'm just going to ask you real quick, and if you could pronounce, uh, just say, I do afterwards, if, if you so do. Um, do each of you accept the office to which you have been called and promised with God as your helper to fulfill its duties faithfully? We do. All right. And, um, well, actually, I should do this. Could each of you, like, say what, uh, what you've been elected to or what you're doing? So, Kim Deacon. Deacon, Corey. Bruce. <laughs> Corey's, a, Corey's also an elder, uh, stewardship chair, and what? Vice chair of the council. All right, and Bruce. Deacon chair. Tom. Facility chair and deacon. Okay, Pamela. Deacon. All right, so um, you've all accepted these offices um, and promised to fulfill your, your duties faithfully. Now I'm going to ask, you can all be seated, um, but I'm going to ask the congregation, those of us that are gathered, do you pledge your own personal support to work and uh, support the work of God in this congregation under the leadership of these individuals and pray God's blessing upon them? Say we do. We do. Let us pray over the leadership and over this church. Almighty God, we rejoice that you have called us to be your people in this time and place. Help us to faithfully fulfill the mission of the church. Strengthen each of us as we promise to uphold your leaders and hope and encouragement. Fill this congregation with your loving spirit that we may work together so that all members dedicate themselves for the common good and your glory, Lord. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. So. Again, you're all formally installed now, but if you're upstairs in sanctuary worship, you know, please entertain me again. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, today's scripture lesson comes from Luke chapter 3. Selected verses 15 through 17, and then 22, 21 and 22. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah. This is John the Baptist. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my son the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Heavenly Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 
it goes without saying that the weather this past couple of weeks has been kind of crazy, crazy cold, and kept many of us from our normal routines and just even being able to get out and venture out. Um, but there are still things that we must do. There are still things that go on, and we're obligated to do those things. Um, recently, there was a couple of nights when I was out after dark. One night, I needed to run out to the Walmart for a quick home maintenance issue. Uh, we've got another home maintenance issue. Walmart can't fix that one. Um, but I was also out to grab a dessert for Christine, too. But uh, anyways, on that night, I was uh, briefly awestruck by a brilliantly shining shooting star traveling alongside of my car. And then quickly, as an ordained minister, just a whole flood of things went through my brain in that instant watching that shooting star. And I didn't know the proper protocol for, for wishing on stars anymore. Is this something that's, that's even allowed for, for me? Um, we didn't cover it in seminary, and it's not mentioned in my ministerial code of ethics, which I signed. Um, and the Bible itself doesn't specifically speak against it, so hopefully I feel like I'm good with God in this one. But uh, I frantically had made up my mind to make a wish on that star. Uh, even though I didn't know what to wish for, I already went, my mind went one place already, now we're going to go someplace else. Um, <laughs> but I'd been a praying for an assortment of things, and I didn't know which one to lift up in that streaking moment. I wanted to make my wish before the light from that meteor had dissipated into the other unmoving stars. And in that panic, I wished for <laughs> better financial security and wisdom for my family and the church. That was my wish. And then I had thought, <laughs> did I really just wish for money? I had felt pretty guilty on that one. Um, as a minister, I thought my focus was supposed to be on peace, love, and God's salvation, not on material things and money. And then the very next night, I was out again after dark, spending unbudgeted money for an event that we were hosting here at the church. I was getting uh, light breakfast snacks uh, for the Logan County, uh, Logan County Housing Coalition that we were hosting here at the church. Again, the church has been pretty busy over these past couple of weeks. And um, so as we're hosting, I'm thinking active hospitality, snacks. Um, so my wish that next night, it didn't come true. It actually came back to haunt me. Um, and for lack of a better word, I felt like I <laughs> needed to be repentant. Um, I had wished for better financial health, and here I am out late spending money that I don't know if we have for this. And again, I could justify that act as something for hospitality, but really, my actions seems to be in conflict with the wish and the prayer from the night before. My actions didn't back up my thoughts. And my behavior has not improved over the next few weeks. I've I'm uh, now in the process of working with the stewardship committee to see if there's a way we can get new furniture for the pastor's office. <laughs> the world and all of the franticness that happens and all of these moments of, all these, these instances that just come up and just shock us. How do we respond in those, those at times? Um, and then as we reflect back on them, you know, there's, there's complexity in this world. The world is, is broken. We as Christians may be well-intended, but we're not perfect. Fortunately, I take comfort in the idea that, um, and the knowledge that there's the possibility of redemption. Jesus never minded uh, close associations with sinners, of course. And in the passage from Luke today, we see Jesus who's getting in line with all the other people that John the Baptist was baptizing, and Jesus is in line with them to be baptized. My story is complicated by the additional events that occurred over the past few weeks. 
after my prayer, if I can call it that, after my wish, I received an email. The same email had come across three times from three different people. And again, it may prove to be an answer to one of the prayers that we have within this church. We've been invited by the Ohio Region Disciples of Christ to apply for a grant that would provide us with coaching and materials to engage in a program that is designed to improve both personal and congregational financial wellness. So is my wish upon a star coming true? Perhaps what is happening in that simple wish made in a state of anxiety and insecurity is being transformed into a greater purpose. Perhaps my wish on a star is better under understood as a prayer. God speaks to us in any manner that, that we can possibly understand. We come to God filled with questions, doubts, and worries. Today we heard about the baptism of Jesus from the Gospel of Luke. Our story began not with Jesus, not with the Holy Spirit, nor with John the Baptist. Our story began with the people. These people that were filled with expectations and questions of the heart. Can I wish on shooting stars? Can I pray for financial security? Am I good enough for God? Am I good enough? Does the Bible really say that? What must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? What have I done? To clothe the naked, feed the hungry, quench the thirst of the thirsty, welcome the stranger, care for the sick, and visit the imprisoned. It is our faith in God that causes us to ask these questions. We're no different than the people that followed John the Baptist. It was John who shouted, make a pathway for the Lord. The people asked John what it was they should do as he was baptizing them, forgiving them of their sins if they'd only repent. And John's teachings through baptism led people to live a transformed life. In our faith, we have a covenant with God. As long as we will be God's people, God will be our God. We will not always be perfect, and we will need to ask for prayers for our misguided selves, and that includes repenting for things that we have done knowingly and unknowingly to cause harm. The public act of baptism reminds us of the covenant with God, and this action symbolizes that you are given a clean slate and are being born into a new life. Disciples, theologians, Ron Allen and Clark Williamson, offer their scholarly wisdom by saying that the water does not itself purify or convert. God uses the water to impress purification or welcome on the heart. The public act of being baptized puts you in a position to be affirmed by a loving community that shares in your commitment. We enter into a covenant with each other as well as with God that you are forgiven and everything is going to be okay. You are loved and the Holy Spirit is also with you. It guides you and moves you as you live into a transformed life. So according to Luke, John's baptism, it communicated a forgiveness of sin and also set people apart as a community for a new transformed world, a world where God is active in it. After Jesus was immersed, he prayed. The prayer itself, that act, is an opening of the self or of a community to that realm of God that we welcome here with us. When Jesus was in that moment of prayer, God opened the heavens. For Luke, this act 
of God opening the heaven is invoking a divine blessing and guidance. And this particular detail within Luke tells the reader that this ministry of Jesus is under God's blessing and guidance. After Christ was baptized, he began his ministry. And because that was when he received because that's when he received the gift of the Holy Spirit. We all have gifts that have been bestowed upon us by God. Some of them are realized, we're acting out into those. And others, some of our gifts are undeveloped. But we still have gifts that we can each share. We're called to share and express our gifts in the name of Christ to bring about the realm of God with the aid of the Holy Spirit. This congregation had voted back in November for its leadership to be in the um, for its leadership in ministry for 2019. And we recognize those leaders here today. Um, and you'll hear from some of our other leaders in the coming weeks, the chairs of our committee departments. And they're going to talk about the mission we have here at First Christian Church. Our leadership teams have visions for the things we would like to do, for the things that we're called to do. And you are all invited to be a part of these teams and to partake in the mission of First Christian Church and to have and to share your vision for ministry. We are going to spend a lot of time during this season of Epiphany talking about our gifts. Giving monetarily is one way of many to share your gifts with the church. In order to express our gifts and impact the community as a congregation, it really is um, important that we be financially healthy. Money is one gift that we use to support the Christian mission into the community of Bell Fountain and God's greater creation, the world. It's also important for us to internally set aside our time to give our other gifts that we have received from God. Your gifts of knowledge and experience, your artistic gifts, the music that you have to offer, your ability to design, and in all manifestations that visual art can be depicted, your gifts of writing and contemplative thoughts, contemplative thoughts, your gifts of administration and leadership, your gifts of service through Ding, through doing what needs to be done, what is right, your gifts of prayer, your gifts of love and compassion, caring and hospitality, your gifts of life centered on the light of Christ. The Holy Spirit is active in this congregation and in all of you. It's the gift you've received. Now share the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
called or moved in this moment to share your gifts that you have received from the Holy Spirit, um, how you wish to engage this congregation or ways that Christ has been active and have moved you to respond to this world, you're invited to come forward and share that testimony as we sing um, the, the next song together. Also, you may come forward if you wish to rededicate your life to Christ or join this church in membership. Come forward as we all stand and sing together. <laughs>